So, welcome to Midcamp Mattis and planning human-centered events. Uh, so, my name is Avi, uh, and I am going to presenting to be presenting this. But uh, really, this talk uh, was produced by the whole Midcamp team. Um, there are a ton of people who have helped with this over the years, and uh, there are too many to list. So, uh, yeah. Uh, also, you can get the slides and uh, rate the session at bit.ly uh, bit slash midcamp dash humans. Uh, and with that, I will get into it. So Midcamp. Uh, Midcamp is an uh, annual event in Chicago, brings together people who use, develop, design, and support Drupal. Uh, so we're Chicago camp. Uh, we've got about 300 attendees. Um, we're starting to plan our fourth year. Uh, our attendees are split pretty evenly uh, between beginner, advanced, beginner, intermediate, and advanced uh, folks from uh, development shops, uh, Agencies, businesses, higher ed, uh, all over Chicagoland and uh, the world, really. We get people uh, coming in from everywhere. Um, and we have a pretty standard schedule. Uh, Thursday, sprints, Friday, Saturday, uh, sprints and training on Thursday, Friday, Saturday sessions, and then Sunday uh, sprints as well. Um, so the idea is we're not bad camp uh, and we're not nice camp. We're a nice, happy medium uh, in the middle. Uh, what makes us human-centered? Why am I up here talking about what we do? Um, I think a little bit of it is that we're from the Midwest, you know, kind of like Ireland. Uh, the Midwest is, is a little more uh, human-centered. We try and think about people instead of business or making lots of money or whatever. Um, we've got lots of amazing heroes on our team that, uh, that really kind of bring all of these things to the table, and without all of the individuals that have brought their specific passions to the table, none of this would, would happen. Uh, also, we're, we're humans too. Um, we go to lots of camps and cons, and we see the good things and the bad things, and we try and replicate the good things and improve on them, and uh, try and improve on the, um, kind of fix up the, the bad things that we see wherever we go. Uh, so everything that I'm gonna talk about isn't the sum total of everything we do for MidCamp, but uh, it's the things that I and the team think are really special and unique about what we do. So finally, how do we do it all? Eh, I mean, there's a lot of hard work, but sometimes uh, it just kind of all comes together. Uh, it's great. Uh, that, that coming all together does take a lot of uh, meetings, thought, and effort. Um, we really plan year round and uh, and again, a bunch of amazing people. So uh, the way I'm gonna organize this talk, uh, I'm first gonna go through the things we do to help the community, then the things we do to help uh, our attendees, and finally the things we do to help ourselves as organizers, because organizing big events like this is, is hard. Uh, so first, the community. Drupal is, is people. Open source is people. It's all just people, just like Soylent Green. Uh, this is a clip, yeah. Um, so, you know, we, uh, it's, it's all just a bunch of people trying to do the best we can. Uh, and so we at MidCamp try and, and help out the community and contribute back as much as we can. We're a small camp, uh, we're a mid-sized camp. Uh, in Chicago, we realize that not everybody can get there, so we try and do as much as we can to get what we do out to the world. Um, the first thing that we think is awesome uh, is our timing and consistency. So when we started this camp, uh, we really wanted to make sure that it was a predictable time every year. Um, there are a lot of Drupal camps and cons and events. Uh, if you go to DrupalCal, the, the, the calendar is full every year. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we had a specific time that, that people could plan for. Um, also, Chicago is expensive, so we need to be able to plan really far in advance. Uh, we want to be considered of new camps and, uh, and attendees when we are uh, planning so that they can plan their schedules as well. Uh, and we do our best to announce the date of next year's camp at, uh, at, at camp that year. So uh, the more predictable we can be, um, you know, it makes our jobs easier too. So a few hitches along the way for that. Um, we have had a couple times where large camps have tried to schedule at the same time as our camp. We've dealt with that. Uh, we've we've kind of made it work and negotiated that. Um, but it's like I said, it's hard. Um, lunar calendar-based holidays often get in the way uh, of of you know fixing a date. Uh, so Easter, Passover, um, sometimes uh, we just have to plan around that. 
Uh, also, March can be winter in Chicago, and uh, it's cold, and there are lots of, it's, yeah, lots of problems with that. Uh, so the next thing we do for the community is uh, is really amazing bulletproof session recordings. Um, this picture is uh, it's a little bit dark, but it's it's a setup of our session recording kit that uh, that is is really incredible. So uh, why that's important for the community? Um, it's, it's a preservation uh, of, of what we do at camp for all time. We upload these videos to YouTube, uh, just like the stuff here at DrupalCon, and it's out there for anybody in the community to see. Um, it's a great marketing tool, uh, both for the individuals that come, for the agencies that are promoting them. Um, you know, the, the agencies can go out and say, here's what our people are doing, and have real tangible proof that uh, their people are doing these great things in the community, instead of just saying, hey, here's a meetup link uh, that, that has some information on it. Um, it's a really great, great, great path to speaking at DrupalCon. So uh, this is my first DrupalCon talk. I've talked at lots of camps. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so a potential DrupalCon speaker can, uh, can kind of show a resume of real uh, evidence of their talk. And uh, you know these kits are really mobile and easy to share. The first year we did camp, uh, we got the Drupal Association 80-pound uh, Pelican box of laptops and recording stuff, and it was horrible. Uh, it was a pain. It didn't work as well as it should have, and uh, so we kind of started iterating that on and trying to make it better, and uh, I think we really have. Uh, some hitches here. Uh, it's been a lot of work. Um, Kevin has, uh, has, has done some amazing work getting this all together, um, but it, is, it does require some technical expertise. Um, Larry, or some other Linux users, but mostly Larry, who has reformed now, uh, can have problems recording and getting stuff out, but uh, we've got most of those things situated. Uh, you still have to push a big red button to start and stop the recordings. Every once in a while, that doesn't work, um, but we're doing our best for that. Uh, and you still need a person in every room to, uh, to kind of monitor and, and keep things moving. So it, uh, sleep. Yeah, it does, it does take somebody um, to keep the recordings moving. Uh, the next thing we do for the community is blind session selection. Um, this is really great because it levels the playing field between experienced and novice presenters. Um, being being mid-camp, a, a kind of community camp, we try and get a great mix of, of both new folks and experienced folks um, to present at our camp. And uh, this has been a really amazing way to, to help us remove uh, as many biases as possible when we're uh, making selections for sessions. Um, this image is just part of one of the giant spreadsheets we use to select, uh, select sessions. Um, some hitches along the way. Uh, takes a lot of work to pick sessions. Um, it's, it's really time consuming and hard, um, but I think it's worth it. Uh, another hitch, even though we bring in a lot of people, the community isn't that big, uh, and people generally talk about similar things uh, from, from camp to camp. So uh, often just by the title of a session, we can know who's presenting it, which introduces some biases. Um, and also, we do want to provide as much of a quality experience as possible. Um, we really want to, you know, provide a great selection of sessions and uh, making sure that presenters are experienced and, uh, and, and know what they're talking about is hard when you're, when you're not uh, able to know who they are. Um, okay, next up is things we do for attendees. Um, so, you know, running a camp, we're really taking over people's lives for two to four days. Um, we are kind of shaping their entire experience for that time, and we want to make it as good as possible. Um, does anybody know the, the line from this clip? No. Her life is in your hands, dude. It's from The Big Lebowski. Her life is in your hands. Uh, so we're, we're taking people's lives over. We want to make that uh, a great experience. Uh, so the first section of, of things we do for attendees is all about the venue. Um, so when we select a venue, um, we have really strict criteria for, for doing that. Um, we try and get it close to public transportation. We try and get it close to um, hotels, to restaurants, you know, as close to as many things as possible as we can. Um, 
doing that is really hard. Um, <laughs> all of the, the things we, we, we try and find is a great layout, human-centered amenities, adequate AV, decent Wi-Fi, uh, enough rooms, um, non-session rooms, capacity for, uh, for the keynote, uh, central location, <laughs> stuff to do, uh, a place in March that doesn't conflict with anything at the right time, uh, and, and something that we can actually afford. All of these are, are real. <laughs> just a couple things. Um, uh, finding all of those in Chicago takes a, a ton of effort and means that we have to start planning more than a year in advance. And money. And money, yes. Um, so next up, uh, walkthroughs and signage. Um, so we try and do as much prep before the event as possible to have uh, venue walkthroughs on our website uh, so that both um, both uh, site and, and mobility challenge folks and everybody can, uh, can get around as easily as possible. Um, you've seen here, um, the, the venue has been amazing and there are people at the top of every escalator and every entrance to every hallway telling people where to go. Uh, we don't have nearly that staff, so we, uh, we do the best we can with signage. And uh, getting some designers with Sharpies and a bunch of boards um, gets you a pretty long way. Um, like I said, signage is really not hard. Uh, you, you can just get a bunch of people sat down uh, each day and, and make some big signs. Uh, if you have time, uh, you can print stuff out. And again, that's, uh, that's not too hard and really, really goes a long way to improving the attendees' experience. Um, next up is uh, power electricity. This is a little image from a game called Bioshock that I really like, Power to the People Station. Uh, but electricity runs everything we do. Um, it, it's money. Uh, it, we literally can't do anything without it. Uh, so we try and get power to as many seats as possible, uh, both in the main keynote room, uh, in session rooms, in the sprint rooms, and uh, doing that in a lot of places is hard. Chicago has a lot of old buildings, um, so just finding the wall receptacles is really challenging. And then once we do do that, um, taping down power strips either means hiring somebody from the venue or doing it ourselves, which takes a lot of time and effort. Um, we, we bought many dozen power strips now, um, and uh, a bunch of uh, black tape, and sometimes we do it, and sometimes the venue can do it. Um, but this is something that we do that's, that I think is really important, uh, just as an attendee trying to find power. Uh, next up is accessibility. Uh, this is a sticker that says, my disability isn't always visible. Think before you judge. Um, we really try and, and do as much as we can um, to make sure people with, with any kind of um, accessibility, accessibility issue are able to, uh, to navigate our event. Um, the first thing here is uh, walking lanes. So this is a picture of a uh, red carpet with some blue tape uh, and lines marking out uh, our walking lane. Uh, why it's awesome, it, uh, it helps low vision uh, and movement challenge folks navigate a uh, complex space. We often have lots of different tables, lots of people around, and uh, we found that this is a really great way to, um, to help folks move about these, these complex spaces. Uh, and again, helping, uh, you know, this, this can help everybody too. Um, uh, you know, as you've seen in the exhibit hall, uh, when you're trying to get lunch, when you're trying to navigate through, uh, through lots of complex spaces, it can be really hard to, to get where you're going. And uh, helping people to, um, helping attendees to know where they should be walking and where they should be standing um, means that everybody can get around better. Uh, Hitchels along the way. So tape is cheap. You know, we bought hundreds of yards of, of blue painter's tape for uh, a couple dollars. Um, but it does take a lot of people to, to put this all down, so. Um, you know, there's not a lot of prep work. You have to go to the hardware store. Um, but, uh, but just finding a bunch of people to, to lay it all down and uh, somebody to manage that whole process takes a little bit of time. But uh, again, this is something really easy that we found a lot of people are just like, wow, this is really great. Um, finally up, uh, we have transcription. So. We've uh, gone to a lot of effort to um, 
have live transcription we for the first year or last year um, at our event. And uh, so we had it for the keynote and one session room. Um, this means that, um, that, that low vision folks can, uh, or sorry, uh, hard of hearing, um, hearing impaired folks can, uh, can hear what's going on at the keynote and in these session rooms. Uh, but it also means that we have a really high quality transcription for our most important sessions um, so that when they go up on YouTube, we can dump the transcri transcription up there and instead of having YouTube's automatic transcription, which can be touch and go, especially with um, technical talks, we have really, really great um, high quality uh, transcription to go along with those videos. Uh, the one hitch here is that it is expensive. Um, you know, this, uh, this is a person, uh, I think we have to get two because they have to work in shifts. But no, that was, that was no, signing, that was yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, but uh, still, this is one person who we have to pay for an entire day um, to be here and do the work. Uh, and days. Two days, yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, a person that we have to pay for two days. Um, so, but we got an amazing sponsor and uh, we hope to continue this. It, uh, it was really, really great. And again, um, trying to anticipate the needs of our attendees is something that, uh, that we really focus on with MidCamp. Um, we didn't know that this was a problem, but we wanted to make sure that anybody who came uh, with this need uh, was available and we're, we're using the benefits that that provides to help everybody. Next up, um, just all the other things. Um, we have so many different um, attendee accessibility things that we do. Um, we do our best in every venue to find accessible bathrooms, uh, accessible elevators. Uh, we do our best to have a, a gender non-binary bathroom. Um, again, just to, uh, just to make people feel comfortable um, you know, and not have to ask, ask awkward questions. Um, we do our best to make space between the banquet tables. Um, the first couple of years we had the event, we were cramming a, a lot of people in a really small space, and that means that it's hard for everybody to get around. Um, so in the picture on the bottom here, you can see we've got a, a decent amount of space between our tables. You can also see in that picture walking lanes. Oh yeah, lanes. you can see blue walking lanes in the, the bottom left of this picture. Um, we have a lactation room, uh, or we do our best to find one. Um, Jim shared a story uh, in 2015. Um, one of our developers, who was new mother, asked an organizer um, if there was a refrigerator she could use to store breast milk. Um, during that conversation, the organizer pulled a couple people together, um, helped her to find her a place uh, to pump, and uh, instead of a bathroom, bathroom's not a great place to go through all that as a, as a new father with a wife who's just doing that, I know. Um, so within a few minutes, uh, she had a private room, um, a fridge, a do not disturb sign on that room, and uh, the attendee was, was really, really uh, happy that, that uh, we were able to find her that. And that wasn't something that we planned on, but uh, just having enough people and, uh, and the organization to know, um, you know, to be able to figure that out was, was pretty great. We didn't plan it the first time, but now, but now we're planning on it. Yes. Uh, other things, uh, we do our best to have a quiet space. Um, you know, if you come to DrupalCon, you know it can be an overwhelming experience. Um, so we we have a quiet room, uh, and we've also had various um, kind of detox spaces, uh, like a coloring table with just colored pencils and and coloring books, where you can just kind of decompress from Drupal and take some some time away. Uh, also, badgelets. These are really amazing. Uh, I wish I would have brought one, but it's a little um, mini uh, program that has a place for your name on the front. It has the sessions in the book, uh, and it also has space for sponsors to, to put their name on it. Um, this means that every attendee is walking around with a copy of the schedule, really easily accessible. Um, we can sell space to, to, it, to uh, sponsors and, uh, and have a name tag all in the same thing. So it's a, it's a really great... Um, great thing that we've uh, we've brought up. So, okay. Um, next, uh, inclusivity. So again, I've talked about a few ways that we try to anticipate attendee needs, um, and this is really all just towards building 
uh, a safer, more welcoming space for, for folks. We want to do our best to, um, to just make sure that, that uh, you know, that, that we make the experience as, as good as possible. Um, again, that means that, uh, that the, the fewer kind of challenging interactions we can make for attendees um, and the, the more positive experiences we can have, we can make for them, the better their experience will be. Um, so uh, the code of conduct, this isn't something that we do specifically, but uh, I think it's worth pointing out. Uh, this is a slide that says, uh, code of conduct, if you don't think, then you shouldn't talk, which is a quote from Alice in Wonderland. That's not really, uh, you know, the code of conduct, but uh, it, uh, it, you know, it's funny. Um, <laughs> so uh, the, the code of conduct is, is, as you know, there to make everybody feel safe and included. Uh, it's, it's a really important thing that uh, I think we all know about now, but, uh, but actually promoting its existence and, uh, and making sure that attendees know who to talk to is really important. Um, to do that, you do have to have um, a, a kind of one single person point of contact uh, for any code of conduct issues that might come up on site. Um, so you do have to identify that person and make sure that they're prepared to deal with uh, any of the various uh, possibilities that, that may arise. Um, as long as you can identify that person, uh, it's just a matter of um, making sure everybody knows about it. And that's something that a lot of places don't do. Um, so you know, we have a slide uh, and we talk about it uh, at the beginning of uh, every day. Um, make sure that attendees know who to talk to if they, if they need help. Uh, another inclusivity um, thing that we do is, is non-alcoholic socials. Um, so uh, this is important because not everybody attending the conference um, is, is comfortable at, at alcoholic events. Um, again, at DrupalCon, there's, there's lots of drinking, lots of heavy partying that goes on. And uh, it's nice to provide a space that uh, isn't so loud, isn't so crazy, doesn't involve lots of drunk people. Um, so, uh, so yeah, um, alcoholic events can lead to, to lots of craziness, and um, we want to make sure people who, uh, who need a space where, uh, where they aren't going to be exposed to that are able to, uh, to find that space. Uh, here we have a picture of the event um, last year, I think. Uh, we have a bunch of people around a table playing a uh, some card game. Um, so yeah, we've had uh, tea, we've had uh, game nights, things where, where folks can just get together in the evening and, uh, and socialize. Um, so uh, one hitch along the way, in the past this has gotten less attention and less planning than, um, than our major parties, uh, our big alcoholic parties, um, but this is something we're working on for the future. Uh, our venue this year has given us an amazing space for free. Um, to have uh, to have this uh, game night, uh, and so we're really looking forward to that. Next up, uh, color coded lanyards. So um, we really wanted to make sure that uh, there, there, folks who aren't comfortable with having their picture taken have a good way of signifying that. Um, it's really hard with stickers or other indicators. Um, you know, there are lots of photographers around and they may not know everybody's preferences. So what we do is color-coded lanyards. Um, this is a picture of blue and yellow lanyards because they were thankfully sponsored by Pantheon last year. Um, so we had a table at the, at the front door where we were checking people in. Um, yellow lanyards mean I don't want my photograph taken. Um, this way, everybody has a lanyard on and the lanyards are almost always visible in pictures. Um, so we can really easily um, you know, uh, crop people out, or not crop people out, but uh, make sure that if we do take pictures of people that they don't get posted online. Um, so yeah, uh, again, uh, another way we are trying to anticipate needs um, and not, not have to uh, put attendees in, in awkward situations. So we're giving them the choice at the outset um, and letting them them uh, express their preference without having to, you know, go through a, an awkward interaction. Um, a couple hitches. This can mean uh, that group shots or kind of big wide angle shots can be challenging, um, but we've had great photographers who've been able to deal with this. Uh, and it is in the end up to the community. If uh, 
you know, uh, folks who aren't associated with the event are taking pictures. Uh, we do our best to make it clear that, uh, that they should respect um, these wishes. Okay, there's a lot of things. Uh, finally, we are two things we do for ourselves as organizers. This is a picture from Avengers. It's the Avengers um, eating shawarma after the, they saved the world. Um, so saving the world is hard. We're trying to do our little part towards that, um, but it takes a lot of work, and uh, we, you know, we we want to make sure that we are able to continue doing this, and uh, yeah. So these are the things we do to help that. The first is uh, open organization. Um, so uh, we use uh, you know free and open tools to organize all our events, uh, Google Groups. Docs, Slack, Trello. Um, we uh, we do our best to make sure that anybody who wants to can be involved in our organization process. Um, we've moved to uh, mostly uh, online meetings, which means that uh, people don't have to commute in or spend uh, a bunch of time out of more time out of their day coming to a meeting, um, and it uh, it helps helps everybody get involved. Um, all of our information and communications are free to join and contribute to, so anybody who wants can pop in uh, to our Slack channel and, uh, and help us out. And uh, we keep our meeting notes in a shared Google Drive that everybody has access to, so we can always go back in. Um, I frequently uh, go back and, and look at the previous year's notes, and uh, because we started this from the onset, we have everything, all of the knowledge that we've generated in one place uh, for all of the mid-camp planning. And that means that uh, that you know we can much more easily um, not have to rehash uh, decisions that we've made in the past. Um, yeah, so that's um, that's our open organization. Wait, wait. Yeah, you didn't explain. I didn't explain the picture. <laughs> this is a uh, this is a pretty much picture. Um, in, uh, in my new job, we we do use Zoom, and Zoom has this view where uh, where you can see everybody's faces, but. Uh, you know, the Hangouts uh, kind of look like that. There's also Vince Vaughn in the middle. Um, it's weird, and uh, yeah, it's, that's, that's it. <laughs> There's no explanation for that. Uh, so the next thing we do to help ourselves uh, <laughs> is, is we do our best to prevent burnout. Uh, this is a GIF of a really frustrated person banging on the keyboard so hard that their head explodes. This is my favorite gift in the world. I'm sorry if you have problems with violence. Uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's really important to prevent burnout. Uh, as, as you all have known, if you, if, uh, if you went to Alina's talk, uh, there, there have been lots of talks in the past couple of years about burnout in Drupal. Um, burnout is really hard, and we have a, an amazing group of volunteers who do incredible work uh, over the whole the course of a whole year and many years um, to, uh, to make this event happen. So uh, we try and nurture the team and do the best we can um, to make sure that we don't have burnout. Um, sometimes it happens, um, and we, but, we, but we do our very best to, to try, and, uh, try and make sure that team members are supported uh, the whole way and uh, never get to the point where they feel like they put in too much. Um, so, so one hitch here, we do uh, struggle onboarding new team members. Uh, you know, it's a, like I said, it's a small community, um, and we, uh, you know, we really always need volunteers. So, uh, the more volunteers we can get and the more people who are seriously committed to the camp, um, the, the better we can spread the work out. And, uh, sometimes that's really hard. I will move on <laughs> from this, uh, disturbing image. Uh, and finally, happy organizers means happy attendees, and happy attendees means happy organizers. Um, this is a kind of dark picture of a bunch of our organizers from last year. Um, so all of the things in the previous slides, uh, when they all go together, mean that the organizers have to do less at the event. Um, if we, uh, you know, if we can think less about, uh, you know all of these different things that we're planning ahead on, then it means we can be more available at the event to react to things that we haven't thought of. Um, and those things that we haven't thought of, we will add into the book for the next year. 
um, to try and try and kind of better account for our attendees needs. But uh, yeah, the more we can build upon our knowledge and, and do more better year to year, um, the better the conference will be and the easier it will be for us going forward. Okay, so in conclusion, this is a full group shot of all of our camp from last year. Um, yeah, so your camp probably evented elsewhere. Um, as I said in the beginning, we, uh, we go to lots of camps and cons and uh, we didn't invent the wheel here. We, we took a ton from all of the, uh, our previous experiences and we, we built upon those. Um, and, uh, and I've said, as I, as I've said, kind of going through this, um, it doesn't take a mind reader to, to know and be able to figure out some of these things. It just takes some empathy and being able to pre-anticipate, um, some of your attendees needs. Um, so, uh, here I've got some images. Uh, it doesn't take a Vulcan that has, uh, that has, you know, real telepathic powers. Um, it just takes, uh, someone like Deanna Troy, who has a little bit of an advantage because she's half Betazoid, but uh, she, she can, you know, feel what people, uh, you know, better feel what people are feeling and empathize with folks. Um, you know, I, uh, the conference organizing is really, you know, similar to, to being in a relationship. When I first was married to my wife, uh, we would get into to conflicts and, uh, be like I, I like I can't read your mind. I don't know what you want. Uh, like I don't know how to to help this and and make things better. But uh, as we've kind of moved through our relationship, I have realized that uh, if I if I use more empathy, if I can better help, better kind of anticipate um, the the problems that are going to arise, then then you know we can uh, we can have a better relationship moving forward. Um, so with that. Um, Mid Camp 2017, March 30th through April 2nd, 2017 in Chicago. Um, so we still need volunteers. Um, we need folks to help us organize. Uh, we need attendees and we need sponsors. Um, if you want to help in any way, we would love to have you put this on your calendar. Um, check us out and join us in March in Chicago. Oh yeah, uh, the time is coming, the walrus said, to talk of many things. So we will talk of many things uh, in Chicago in 2017. In March and in April. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. The end of very, very, very end of March. Um, this is a picture of our new Drupal Hatter. There's some stickers here at the front if you want to take one on the way out. Um, so with that, uh, do we have any questions? There is a mic, uh, but I can also just repeat the question. <laughs> so not a question, but two notes. As a foreign English speaker, uh, subtitling helps a lot for people who don't understand spoken English, because mm -hmm. they can read English. So it's not just for people who don't hear, there's also people who hear, but they don't understand. Yeah, that's great. And also the game nights or or and or any social program outside of bars is great for foreign speakers like me. Like yesterday I was at a at a party here on a boat and inside the boat I've had a very hard time sustaining a conversation because there was loud music and loud people all at once. And regardless of whether I drank al alcohol or not, which I by the way at that time did not I I could not sustain a conversation because I'm already like three or four days into this conference. It's a foreign language. And we are talking about kids and politics and movies and culture and not technology. So like it's like it's like four it's like four degrees out of the usual English comfort zone that I have, that I usually I'm sitting back home in my home office <laughs> and on hangouts and it's me speaking or someone else speaking and nobody else speaking and we talk about technology, and so there's there's several degrees out when you go to a party, to a bar. So it's a lot more accessible for those folks to have a more quieter place that you can just sit down and talk about things. Sure. No, that's a really good point. And I mean, yeah, even I have trouble 
understanding people who are speaking English in, in places like that. So yep. uh, yeah, that's a really great point. Um, I appreciate it. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice just to have a place where you can sit and talk. And we do, we do get, uh, get attendees, um, you know, from Latin America, from Canada, um, you know, from, uh, from Europe as well. So, um, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. And also just not everybody in Chicago is a native speaker. Not everybody in Chicago is a native English speaker. That's true. Yeah. Kathy has a question or comment. Um, mm. We'll see what it is. Uh, so you... Uh, you talked about the blind session selection, mm -hmm. and I know when other events hear that we do that, they have questions about how we maintain uh, quality and a good experience for attendees with that, and you talked about some of the ways um, uh, that we try and help with that, and I think one of the other things is um, for all of our speakers, whether they end up having been a first-time speaker or an experienced speaker, they get communication from the camp on several occasions with right. time before the camp, um, both with tips on how to prepare so it helps them succeed. So whether or not they're new or they've spoken before, we're trying to make sure that the speakers are prepared so they have a good experience, but it also improves the quality uh, for our attendees. Mm -hmm. So that helps us deal with this like fear of blind session selection. Um, uh, but like one of the things that we have done is um, offer for all of our speakers, if they want, they can give their presentation like through a hangout to one of the organizers. So if they haven't spoken before, they, they can get some feedback ahead of time. I don't think we've ever had any of our speakers take, take us on up on it. Yeah. Um, but I think expressing that to our speakers ahead of time helps them understand that when they need us, when they need the organizers, right. that the organizers are really there um, to help them. So it's a nice intention to communicate. And if somebody were to want to take advantage of that, it's, it's like it's a low-cost thing to do. Um, you mentioned that um, the live captioning was expensive. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how much it was? It was like 1200 or something for the day? Per day. Per day, yeah. For so one room. Correct, yes. So that's $1,200 per day per room. So. so if we, and we have four to five rooms? Yeah, I think we have five session rooms this year. Yeah, so to do it for the whole camp would be like, Ten, ten to twelve thousand dollars. Right. It's hard to sell. That's that's a lot. When the budget, the the whole budget for the camp is less than fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we're open to sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> um. You had a point uh, when you were talking about the um, colored lanyards. Mm -hmm that uh, one of the like ways that we view that as, I keep saying we, I'm sorry. It's one okay. of the ways that the, uh, that the camp views that as being human-centered is um, that it avoids awkward requests. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a common um, theme that can be applied to a lot of different areas because with planning in advance um, and preparation, and a little bit of infrastructure, what it does is it moves the burden from the person who needs something to people who are more capable of um, being able to offer it. Right. And so <coughs> like sometimes you'll go to conferences and the registration form will have like a thing at the bottom that says put your requests here that p is putting the burden on the person who's doing the requesting. When you have an event who can communicate ahead of time um, on their brochure or their website, you know, we have a lactation room, we have a quiet room, this is our photo policy, you, nobody has to ask for those things. Um, and that's really human-centered. Uh, it's also really nice advertising 
um, ahead of time, but it mainly it's, it's, a, it's about moving the burden. And right. so I think when you made that comment about avoiding awkward requests, mm -hmm. I think that's like one of the key right. things that really um, makes it human centered. So I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's really all about anticipating needs and doing our best to, uh, yeah, like I said, like you said, to make sure that, uh, that people don't have to ask. Um, because that's really, you know, if you have to ask, then, then it kind of make, brings things to a whole new level. Hi, um, I guess uh, commenting on a previous comment about uh, how there are frequently uh, questions when people hear about the blind review process. Sure. That uh, other, I, I'm I actually uh, for the past ten years have uh, uh, participated in putting on a conference. It's uh, not not a Drupal conference, but about Drupal camp size between four to five hundred people, mm -hmm. two days. Uh, specifically a user experience conference. And uh, this year uh, is our first year uh, instituting a blind review sure. proposal. Because I think in the past uh, we've, a, a lot of times people just pick the known speaker, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they'll Absolutely. get higher reviews just yep. because, oh, you know, oh, this person has a book out, you know. Yep. They, they have to be good and, and they don't really read, <coughs> critique the review as much. And uh, during that, process is it blind for just like the uh, the peer review process and then during the uh, final selection you know is it unblinded sure. then, so to speak yeah okay uh, I can go through a little bit of that we have a blog post about the full process from a couple years ago I think so so um, just a quick comment before I answer that uh, this is all meant to be a, a very brief review of a lot of the things. I My goal is to put it all into a post mm -hmm. with lots of links to more detail about all of these. Um, in general, um, so I wasn't deeply involved in the session selection this past year, but I was two years ago. Um, the way we did it then is um, we went through, um, dumped all of the submissions out to a spreadsheet, um, assigned every user a user. Well, we use the Drupal user ID as the anonymizing um, uh, number. So uh, we stripped out all the user ID or all the the name information uh, and just subbed that for the user ID. Uh, and then we also went through the descriptions and titles and made sure some people would put their bio in the description. Um, so one, yeah, one person who wasn't going to be reviewing. Uh, went through and did their best anonymizing. I think I did it that year. Uh, uh, went through uh, and, and you know did my best anonymizing all of the data that was in the spreadsheet, uh, which is really hard. And you know you can't get it 100%. Um, like I said, we know some people are going to talk about the same thing every time. Uh, then the reviewers went through and ranked stuff. Um, we also because we did have IDs there, we. Um, when we went through and reviewed, we tried to make sure that we only chose uh, for the first round one session per person, um, because we are, you know, we're only two days. We wanted to make sure that we didn't have any duplication. Um, then, after we did the first pass, we had a few people do a first pass. We kind of collated all those results together. Um, then, I believe, um, once we kind of got it narrowed down to close to our number, I think we did um, unanonymized things and made sure that we. Um, that we had the right mix. Because you can't, you know, uh, we did ask a question whether you've spoken or not before, um, and that gets us a little bit of data, but it's, it's really squishy. Um, so yeah, after the first kind of anonymous pass, we did go through and make sure we had the right mix of experienced speakers and non-experienced right. speakers. And we didn't change a lot. Um, I, don't, I don't know that we changed anything. Yeah. Um, but it, it was an important step just to make sure. Uh, okay, yeah. great. And I actually have a, another uh, question, I guess, and, and kind of a general comment. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess the, the comment in this is uh, one thing you talked about, the communication with speakers. Sure. Uh, I <clears throat> also mentioned that, uh, you know, kind of continuing communication with sponsors mm -hmm. is also another group because they have other needs, like need, they need to know about the venue, the times that they have access. Yep. <clears throat> and all that. And, and one thing that you didn't specifically mention when you talked about your communications with speakers, mm -hmm. uh, and one that I found it has been crucial in my experience, 
been communicating the technological infrastructure available, mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the venue, you know, whether there's sound uh, or, you know, you know, if they can use their own laptop, what sort of uh, <coughs> connections Connectors. there are yep. to the projector mm -hmm. and be, you know, and find that out ahead of time and communicate that specifically and, yeah. <coughs> and still kind of expect that uh, a lot of people will uh, conveniently ignore some of these communications. So it's always good to have a few adapters on hand. Yeah. Uh, and then you, 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 then, uh, you also mentioned that you had struggles with uh, onboarding or, uh, uh, you know, up or obtaining new volunteers. And I was curious, like, specifically what uh, part in the process you had difficulty? Or was it just, did you just have uh, problems getting, you know, new people? Or were new people kind of, uh, you know, kind of, did they kind of fall away during the process after they learned how much work it was? Sure. Was um, it's really just finding people who will both say they will do things and then show up. Um, you know, uh, lots of people will say they're willing to, to help, but then, uh, you know, maybe at camp, say they're willing to help for next year, and then just kind of disappear. Um, you know, folks have um, all kinds of life happens. Um, so really, it, it's just getting people to start helping. Mm -hmm. um, once we have volunteers on board, um, we generally don't have too many problems kind of keeping them involved. Uh, there's lots and lots and lots of work to do. Mm -hmm. So really, it's just finding new folks. That, that do you remember which days we were looking for them? It seemed like the one I remember was Bones. We're, yeah, we're still looking for a volunteer coordinator. Mm -hmm. We're still looking for somebody to do marketing. Um, and uh, we, we can put anybody into any job. Uh, <laughs> we really have a core team of five, five, six folks now. Um, not a lot. We're still pretty early on in this year's process, but uh, the more people we have working on it uh, and just showing up to hangouts, we we do every other week hangouts um, for most most of our active planning time, and then move it up to every week um, a month or two before. Um, so it's it's a significant commitment, um, and there's not a lot of work in some of those times, but uh, yeah, um, we do. Uh, you know, we just just trying to get folks who are who are willing to, to make that commitment. Um, and on, on the speaker, uh, uh, the communication in general, I think that's something that I should actually add um, to this deck. It's it's something that we do a lot of that I didn't talk about. Um, we use Mailchimp to organize all our communications, and we dump stuff out of Drupal. Um, our list of speakers, our list of all the attendees, um, sponsors, and uh, trainers. we trainers. Yeah. Um, and we do uh, as much targeted communication as we can to all those groups, um, starting, you know, from uh, the kind of beginning to take on um, to, to accept sessions, um, session submissions. Uh, we use our, our full list um, of attendees from the last few years. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and then we, we do our best to, to send emails out about session selection, um, the deadlines there. Um, when tickets go on sale um, for speakers, um, for, uh, for um, sponsors coming up to it, we, we give sponsors, uh, some sponsors get tickets, they want to know about you know, who they can bring. Um, so yeah, we do our best to, to get all of those things together, but it's a lot, it's a ton of content that somebody has to generate to make sure everybody knows what's going on. So, yeah. I, were there other questions that I didn't answer? No, I think you, uh, let me see. Well, <laughs> I actually wrote down my questions. Uh, being, uh, no, I, th I think you you did uh, uh, answer those. Uh, okay, <coughs> cool. Thank you. Uh, okay, so if that's it, um, contri contribution sprints tomorrow. Um, here's all the info. It's a great thing. Everybody should do it. Um, and uh, please evaluate my session um, if you go on here. Uh, yeah, so thank you. Thanks for showing up. Yay.